It was a rainy Saturday afternoon, the kind where the sky seemed to be perpetually gray, and the rhythmic patter of raindrops created a soothing yet monotonous soundtrack. With nothing but the sound of rain to keep me company, boredom had officially set in, and I found myself yearning for something to break the monotony. I decided to tackle the dreaded attic, a place where forgotten treasures and dust bunnies coexisted, a realm of mystery and memories waiting to be uncovered. Armed with a flashlight and a dust mask, I ventured into the dimly lit space. Cobwebs brushed my face, and the air smelled of old wood and mothballs, a scent that seemed to whisper secrets of the past. I stumbled upon a dusty box tucked away in a far corner, hidden beneath layers of time. Curiosity peaked, I pulled it out and blew off a thick layer of dust, revealing its long-forgotten contents. Inside, nestled amongst old photographs and trinkets, I found a stack of letters tied together with a faded ribbon. My heart skipped a beat, as if recognizing an old friend. These were my old love letters, relics from a time when love was expressed with pen and paper, not emojis and DMs. Each letter was a testament to youthful passion and earnest emotions. A wave of nostalgia washed over me as I carefully untied the ribbon and began to read, each word a portal to the past. I was transported back to a simpler time, a time of innocent crushes and heartfelt declarations, where every word was carefully chosen and every sentence held a world of meaning. I settled into a comfy armchair, ready to embark on a journey down memory lane, surrounded by the comforting embrace of nostalgia. The faded ink and slightly crumpled pages whispered stories of a younger me, tales of dreams and desires that once felt so urgent and consuming. I couldn't help but smile, anticipating the mix of cringe and cuteness that awaited me, each letter a snapshot of who I once was. It's funny how time can transform something that once felt so serious into something that now brings a chuckle, a gentle reminder of the journey from then to now. The first letter I opened began with the most dramatic salutation, setting the tone for what was to come. My dearest, most beloved, insert high school sweetheart's name. It read in a flourish of ink that seemed to dance across the page. I cringed a little, feeling a mix of embarrassment and nostalgia. The over-the-top language of young love was both endearing and amusing. I remember thinking these words were the epitome of romance back then, the kind of romance that seemed to leap straight out of a fairy tale. Now they brought a smile to my face. It was like stepping into a time capsule, a portal to a simpler time when emotions were raw and unfiltered. Your eyes are like the shimmering stars, one particularly passionate excerpt declared capturing the essence of youthful infatuation. Okay, maybe not quite shimmering stars, more like two brown circles that occasionally blinked, I thought with a chuckle. I chuckled at the exaggerated metaphors. We were so earnest, so sincere in our attempts to express our feelings, pouring our hearts onto paper. Another letter detailed a meticulously planned date at the local pizza parlor, a place that held so many of our cherished memories. I can't wait to share a slice of Hawaiian with you, it read, as if sharing a pizza was the ultimate romantic gesture. Oh, the romance of shared pizza. It sounds cheesy now, but back then it was the height of sophistication, a symbol of our youthful courtship. I continued reading, each letter a reminder of how deeply we felt things back then, how every moment seemed to hold a world of meaning. It was a sweet, naive kind of love, untainted by the complexities of adult relationships, a love that was pure and unburdened by the passage of time. Glitter pens, stickers, and drawings, these were the essential tools of expressing young love. I found a letter adorned with sparkly hearts and a poorly drawn stick figure of us holding hands. The level of artistic talent displayed was questionable, but the sentiment was undeniably sweet. One letter contained a pressed flower, a dandelion if I recall correctly, a symbol of everlasting love perhaps? Or maybe just the only flower I could find in the schoolyard that day. Either way, it was a charming gesture. Grand declarations of love were a recurring theme. Promises of forever, vows to conquer the world together. It was all so dramatic, so intense. Looking back, it's clear we had no idea what forever really meant, but the conviction with which we wrote those words was genuine. The letters were filled with inside jokes and silly nicknames. We had our own secret language, a code only we understood. Reading those words now, I could almost hear our laughter echoing from the past. One letter had a doodle of our future dream house, a sprawling mansion with a heart-shaped swimming pool naturally. Our ambitions were as grand as our declarations of love. We were going to be famous musicians, travel the world, and live happily ever after. Inside jokes, often incomprehensible to anyone but us, peppered the pages. 
a reference to a particularly embarrassing moment, a shared secret, a silly nickname. These little details were windows into our shared world, a world built on whispered confidences and stolen glances. We wrote about our dreams, our fears, our hopes for the future. It was a time of boundless optimism when anything seemed possible. We believed in the power of love to conquer all. Reading these letters now, I'm reminded of the beauty of that youthful idealism. Flipping through the pages, I stumbled upon a folded piece of paper, a playlist of our songs. Each song held a special memory, a moment in time captured in melody and lyrics. I could almost hear the music playing, transporting me back to those carefree days. Section 5. The Language of Young Love the language of young love is a curious thing. It's a mix of cliches, grand pronouncements, and inside jokes, all delivered with the utmost sincerity. Looking back, some of it might seem cringeworthy, but it's also undeniably endearing. We didn't have the emotional vocabulary we do now. We hadn't yet learned the nuances of expressing complex feelings, so we relied on hyperbole, on dramatic declarations, on the language of fairy tales. We wrote about forever as if it were a destination we could easily reach. We promised to love each other always and forever without fully understanding the weight of those words. But in that naivete, there was a certain charm. Reading those letters now, I can see the seeds of the person I would become. The values, the dreams, the hopes that still shape me today. It's a reminder of how much we grow and change over time. Section 6. From Butterflies to Mature Reflections the butterflies in my stomach, the nervous giggles, the stolen kisses, these were the hallmarks of young love. Reading the letters brought those feelings rushing back, albeit in a gentler, more nostalgic way. My perspective on love has certainly changed since those days. I now understand that love is not always grand declarations and fairy tale endings. It's about compromise, about communication, about navigating the complexities of life together. The intensity of young love might fade, but it leaves behind a sweetness a reminder of the pure joy of connection. It's a reminder of the person I was, the person I loved, and the journey we shared. I've learned that love is not a static thing. It evolves, it grows, it adapts. It's not always fireworks and grand gestures. Sometimes it's the quiet comfort of knowing someone has your back, the shared laughter over inside jokes, the unspoken understanding that binds you together. Section 7. Cringe? Cute? A bit of both, eh? Reading those old love letters was a roller coaster of emotions. There were moments of pure cringe, moments where I wanted to bury my face in my hands and pretend I'd never written such things. But there were also moments of genuine sweetness, moments that made me smile and remember the innocence and charm of young love, the over-the-top declarations, the cheesy metaphors, the slightly embarrassing inside jokes. They were all part of it. It was a reminder of a time when my heart was worn on my sleeve, when I believed in the power of love to conquer all. It's funny how something that once felt so serious can now seem so amusing. Time has a way of softening the edges, of turning intensity into nostalgia. Looking back, I can appreciate the humor in it all, the earnest attempts at romance, the dramatic pronouncements, the sheer exuberance of young love. It's a reminder to not take ourselves too seriously. Section 8. The Value of Preserved Memories those old love letters, as cringeworthy as some of them might be, are a precious reminder of my past. They hold within them the echoes of youthful dreams and aspirations, the raw emotions that once filled my heart. They are a testament to the power of words to capture feelings, to preserve moments in time. Each letter is like a snapshot, a frozen moment that tells a story of its own, a story that is uniquely mine. They are a link to a younger me, a me who was still figuring things out, who believed in the magic of love. They remind me of the innocence and hope that once defined my world, a world full of possibilities. They are a reminder of the journey I've taken, the person I've become. Through these letters, I can trace my growth, my evolution, and the lessons learned along the way. They are a piece of my history, a tangible connection to my past. Each letter is a chapter in the book of my life, a chapter that I can revisit whenever I need to remember where I came from. They are a reminder that even though things change, even though people change, the memories we create remain. These letters are like anchors, grounding me in the ever-changing tides of life. These letters are a testament to the importance of preserving our personal histories. They serve as a bridge between the past and the present, connecting the dots of my life's journey. They are a reminder to cherish the moments big and small that shape our lives. 
Each letter is a celebration of those moments, a celebration of life itself. In a world of fleeting digital communication, there's something special about holding a physical letter, a tangible piece of the past. It's a reminder of the human touch, the personal connection that digital messages often lack. These letters are a reminder of a slower, more deliberate time, a time when we took the time to write our feelings down, to express ourselves with pen and paper. They remind us of the beauty of taking things slow, of savoring each word, each sentence, as it flows from the heart onto the page. Section 9. Join the Nostalgia Trip. Have you ever stumbled upon old love letters? Share your stories in the comments below. I'd love to hear about your experiences with the cringe and cuteness of young love. And don't forget to subscribe for more stories and nostalgic adventures.